Greetings, Fox Body community. Today we are starting a new video series around getting your Fox Body Mustang to idle well when tuning uh, around a stock computer. In this series, we're going to have to cover a few different topics. The first one is around idle spark control. The second is idle air control. Uh, the third topic is idle fueling and oxygen sensors. And then the fourth is just some general best practices, you know, when you're dealing with a larger, lumpier cam that generally is pretty unhappy with you unless you know a few tricks. So that's what this series is going to be about. And today's first video is around idle spark control. Now, the first thing to understand about idle in general is that in your tune, you have a parameter that's telling the computer what RPMs do you want to idle at. And so uh, when you get down here into your idle section and go to these uh, scalers, you have RPM and drive, RPM and neutral. Now, if you're dealing with a five-speed computer and a five-speed car, generally you're just going to set these to the same values. And what we're working with here is an A9L strategy, which is, uh, is, is for a Fox body with a five-speed. So you can see the stock is idling at 672 here. Now, we're not gonna go into setting, uh, changing this number here in this video, that'll be in our last one, but just understand that you have this concept of a desired RPM. So when you're idling, the computer is trying to maintain a steady state at whatever you're setting here. So 672 RPMs, remember that. Now, for idle spark, the first thing uh, that actually controls spark is this table right here. And basically what it's saying is, it, at whatever RPM you're at right now, here is the base timing advance it's trying to accomplish uh, to maintain a steady state. And some of you might already be thinking, this is kind of high, 31 degrees. Uh, you know, why do I need to idle at 31? Well, immediately after we talk about this, you'll realize there's a multiplier that brings that way down. So this is almost something you can think of as kind of the, the top end of what it's going to do because what it's going to do is constantly fluctuate between uh, a lower number and a higher number for the sake of trying to keep those RPMs steady. So, you know, if you think about it, if you lock out your distributor uh, on your car, you know, take the spout connector out, lock the distributor, by, by default, it's at 10 degrees. If you start twisting that up and get to 15 and 20, 25, 30, as you start to get to a certain point, your RPMs are actually gonna start to go up. The, the computer can't really control the other parameters outside of timing, and the RPMs are just gonna stay high. And then you, you twist the distributor back down, bring the timing down, and the RPMs should settle back in. So that's really what the computer's doing as sort of a, a first way to control uh, maintaining steady state. So what you're going to notice here is that starting at 400 RPMs and higher, it's just locked out at 31 degrees at a base. So keep that in mind. So now we know we're targeting 672 RPMs, and we have a base starting point here of 31 degrees timing. Now. When you go to this uh, RPM error table, what this is talking about is a multiplier of that number. And this first column is basically an error rate. So when you're at zero error, that means that whatever RPMs you're trying to achieve, you're achieving exactly that. No more, no less, and everything's happy. So what you're saying here is if everything's perfect and we're idling at exactly 672 RPMs, then the number we really are running timing is that 31 degrees times 0.648, which is only 20 degrees. So uh, don't think it's running 31. It's, it's actually set to run about 20 if everything's perfect. Now it's gonna fluctuate, so it'll still go below that and above that, but that's actually your real starting point is 20 degrees. And again, this always, like everything else in the timing strategies here, assumes that you've set your base timing to 10 degrees with the spout out before you did this. So you always want to start there. Okay, so now that you know this is at 20 degrees, uh, 20 degrees, let's talk about well, what happens when your idle starts to bog down. So the way you calculate this is you have your desired RPM, which again was originally 672, and then the computer knows what your actual RPMs are. So if you're bogging down, you're somewhere lower than that. So let's say for the sake of argument, it starts to bog and it makes it down to 572. So you're essentially 100 RPMs below your desired. So the way you figure out what your error rate is, is you take desired minus actual. So if we desired 672, 
and we're bogging down and we only have 572, we'll subtract 572, and that is our error. So basically what that means is the farther down you go and you're bogging lower, lower RPMs, this number will increase. So anytime this number here is greater than zero and you're moving up this way, that's car bogging down. And when you get to negative numbers, so basically your, your idle's a little high and it needs to tame itself back down, your error rate gets into these negative numbers here. Okay, so think about that. Car's bogging by about 100 RPMs. What does it need to do? It needs to advance the timing. Well, how much? Well, there's your answer right there. So at 110 RPM bog, that multiplier changed to 0.969. So if we go back to our calculator again, we do our 31 times 0.969. That means it'll swing up all the way to about 30 degrees if it has to, to try to keep you from bogging and, and dying all the way. And on the other side, once we get to 60 degrees of, or 60 uh, RPMs above our desired, then we end up with 31 times 0.484, and we end up at 15 degrees. So car's running a little above what we want it to. It pulls timing down as low as 15. So basically a stock computer all things considered, uh, you know, the way it should be from the factory, it's going to swing between 15 and 30, but it's generally trying to stay around 20 if it's happy. So this is really the, the fundamental part of uh, tuning these things. Now, when you get into bigger cams, this is going to swing around more, especially if you're trying to maintain a low idle with a lumpy cam, then generally you're going to have a lot of fluctuations here. And what you'll get caught is you get caught in a loop here where it swings just far enough where it freaks out and tries to change the timing a lot to compensate, but it kind of compensates too much, so then it swings back the other way. And then it compensates again, and it overcompensates, and it'll go back and forth, and ultimately, unless you put your foot in it uh, at the stoplight, it's probably going to die on you. So this is kind of where you have to tune this. We're not going to focus on how we change these numbers to, to accomplish that, but just understand this is how the table works. Now, you notice this is the neutral RPM error. So we had a neutral desired, which was 672, and this is the, the multipliers for when you're in neutral. There are different ones for when you're in drive, but again, if you're running a five-speed car, you probably just want to make these both the same um, to make things easier on yourself. But with an automatic car, it's a little different. So if you look at an automatic, while you're technically in drive but you're sitting at a stoplight, you know, it's, it's going to behave a little differently. It's maintaining a little bit more timing uh, kind of at all times, and then it doesn't really have as much room to swing up or swing down, uh, and it starts swinging a little bit sooner or starts altering your timing because, you know, you've got load on the engine by being in gear with an automatic. So even though you're stopped, things are kind of loaded up, and that helps it stay a little bit more stable. So that's why here it's kind of just raising the timing a little bit and giving it less opportunity to swing in either direction. Um, so again, if you know, you're trying to set up your tune five-speed car, you probably want to start by making these tables the same and make sure that your RPM and drive and neutral are the same. And what these numbers should actually be, you know, we'll talk about that more in another video. Now, the last thing I want to say is, so you, you see where we kind of have this baseline and the simple multiplier so it can maintain steady state. There is one other thing in here to consider, and that is when your engine's cold, the factory's adding a little bit of timing here. So basically, if, if your coolant temperature is below 36 degrees, then it's adding uh, as much as three degrees of timing once you hit to zero degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, but it's already starting to ramp that timing up any, any amount below 36 degrees you are uh, on your coolant temp. So um, just keep in mind that it might actually run a few more degrees uh, down there in those low temps, but that's it. And there's nothing in here for uh, kind of like you had when we're looking at the normal spark tables of, you know, maybe pulling timing back when things get hot. Uh, there's, there's no control here for that. I mean, you could certainly tune this table uh, to accomplish it, but honestly, if you're, if you're idling hot, one of the things you, you probably don't want to do is pull timing because it, it could have uh, an effect where you lower your RPMs even more. And what you actually want to do is you want to try to keep your water pump spinning if you have a mechanical water pump. And when your RPMs get really low, uh, you know, it, it's spinning that much less. So your, your thermostat's already open, but it's, you're not getting good flow. So um, that's why they don't pull. That's at least why I suspect they don't pull any extra, extra timing uh, when it's warm but they might add a few extra degrees when it's really, really cold outside. So again,
this is something you might modify. You know, if you're in a, a warm climate, you know, you're down in the south that you never drive when it's cold, whatever, uh, you probably just want to zero these things out just to make it easier on yourself. But if you do have kind of a, a four season car like I do, and you, you see a large range of temperatures like we unfortunately deal with uh, here in Oklahoma, you know, this is something you might want to consider. But if you're wondering if you're running logs and wondering why is it running a little hotter than you expected it to, uh, as far as your, your timing number, that's probably where it's coming from. So that's the basics of idle spark. Uh, there's a little bit more to consider, but we'll get into that in a future video. Next one that comes out tomorrow, we're going to talk about idle air. And that's going to be a two part, uh, two sub part series because idle air, you have what it's doing when you're truly just sitting there at the light. And then you also have some stuff that you really need to consider while you're still driving and while you're coming to a stop uh, to keep your car from dying. So idle air kind of plays into both of those. So look for that in the next videos and uh, we'll keep this thing going. Appreciate it, guys.